All right, let's get right into it and, and let's talk releases. OK, first, we'll start off with, with hand combat. OK, so, you know, the first thing uh, when, before I start talking about hand combat is, um, you know, I kind of went from open hand to, to closed fist a few years ago. And the reason being is that it's a lot more violent. You know, um, you know, the, the example I always give is, is hold your arm out in front of you and smack your forearm. And then close your fist with the same force and kind of hit your forearm. You'll feel a difference. Now, is it the end, end all be all? No, it's not. But um, this is how we practice. OK, so the first thing we talk about is clearing your chest. OK, so you have a guy with a hand shield. These guys they kind of pair up before practice. The first thing we do and they're trying to stick that right in his chest. OK, his job is to take his arm outside arm and clear his chest, okay? The second arm is gonna break down, okay? So when you talk about the first arm should be your clear, clearing your chest, the second arm should be your breakdown arm, okay? Now, you can swim, which he's doing, but and then this guy over here is actually doing a rip, okay? And we'll talk about why that rip is not good here in a second. Again, I think giving you good and bad examples in these drills are, are gonna be good so you can critique those and, and coach your guys. Okay, so again, arms tight to my body. I don't want to expose too much area. Okay, he's trying to keep those elbows tight. I want to be careful of getting my elbow higher than my shoulder, right? So try to keep that elbow down, okay? Keep that elbow down. Try to keep it nice and tight to your body and then kind of step through uh, and try to get hip to hip with the defender. Now, when you look at the guy to, to the left here, okay, He's using an open hand, but the most important thing for me is he's missing, right? You can't miss, okay? And the reason we give him that that whole surface, so you guys, you know, back in the day, you remember it was, you know, try to get the wrist or the elbow or those types of things. And what we just say is it's the whole surface. It's from his hand to his forearm. You got that whole surface to work with, okay? So you can't miss, okay? And then the second part, if he is going to rip what we call kind of our dip and drive is... He needs to reduce, right? His chest should be facing this direction, okay? He wants to hide that shoulder, okay, and reduce and then step through with that same foot, okay, and kind of get through that defender. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So not bad here, okay, not bad here. And I do encourage the step, and we'll talk about running into it a little bit, uh, a suggestion by, by Coach Drayton at the time, our head coach, which, which I thought was a really good suggestion, really good coaching point. But just kind of just kind of work that. Uh, in pre-practice, okay? You know, and, and here's Coach Drayton in the drill, actually, but he made this comment to me in the staff meeting. He said, you know, when guys release, they never just stand in place, all right? So get them attacking the defender so it's more realistic, which I thought that's actually pretty good because he's going to try to shoot when that guy gets within handshake distance. That's typically what they're taught, okay? So let's let's do that with a little bit of momentum, okay? But same thing. His elbow's tight to his body. He's not raising his arms. You see how he kind of tries to hide his shoulder a little bit? I don't mind that. OK, get past that defender. So that's kind of what we want. And then I think it's important to show these guys what the best in the world look like. Right. So Julio Jones at one point was one of the best receivers in the NFL and he was elite with his hands. But kind of everything we're talking about there. Right. So the first hand, he's clearing his chest. And he's breaking it down. OK, and there's the in route hand combat which we'll talk about here in a second. But, you know, the, the urgency in which he gets those hands down, it really gets some separation. And we'll, we'll talk about that as well. OK, but the thing you got to you know, this was an older guy. But, you know, again, this was the first summer these guys had done this drill. What you don't want to do is wind up. Right. Because the time you're taking to wind is no different than when you're in a stock block situation and you want to try to get your hands inside first. It's a race to see who can get their hands in there. So he is going to get his hands in there if you wind, right? So try to keep that nice and tight to your body, okay? Then you got the in route hand combat. We've done this a couple different ways. You know, you can have a guy running with them, okay? Sometimes the older coaches get a little bit tired, so you get the GAs or young guys to, to run with them. Um, and, and the other thing that I've done is, you know, at the start of this, okay, you know, I'll have, you know, myself or somebody standing here in front of him facing him. OK, and I'll shoot my hands. He'll release. He'll get back on his line. OK, and then there will be a coach who's standing back to back with me. And then he will continue down that line with that receiver. You know, I always try to work on lines, you know, to give them that that sense of their they need to stay flat on that line or get back on their line or those types of coaching points. OK, and you could also do that stagnant. So for me, a lot of times. We'll start off with just, you know, uh, you know, the, the, 
the, the hand combat where you're clearing your chest and then we work on this. And the coaching point that we give them is, you know, if it's a low hand, I want you to break it down. If it's a high hand, I want you to wipe it away, kind of like windshield wipers. Low hand, break it. High hand, wipe it away. OK, that's that's kind of what we do now. Again, there has to be urgency in how you do that. OK. And the other thing is you want guys to make sure that they're being urgent in the drill. OK, so a bunch of different ways. And then then again, these drills need to carry over. Right. Boom. There it is. These drills need to carry over in one on ones. And when they do and they carry over into one on ones or game reps, make sure you do a good job of showing those guys, you know, that it actually works because there's a million different ways to teach things. OK, and this will this is a really good job of the move drill, which we'll talk about here in a second on the release. And we'll talk about moving that defender off your line, getting back on your line. That little reduction, that little break gets him in front of that defender. That's kind of what we want. Okay, just there it is. The in route hand combat, right? High hand, wipe it away. Low hand, break it. Okay, but kind of gets you, gives you the opportunity to not compromise. You know, what you get with some young guys is they'll get into this position right here. And they won't do anything for three to four to five to six yards. And by the time that happened, one, they're washed way off their line. And two, they're not getting up the field. So, you know, that urgency of getting the hand off you is just important. OK, so we practice that, you know, when we're stagnant on the sideline. OK, now the other portion of the upper body, we talk about that reduction, that shoulder reduction. OK, that hide that shoulder. You kind of hear that term. People use that. I kind of say sometimes dip and drive. Uh, but but whatever terminology you like to use, th these are plungers. Uh, we have these. You don't necessarily need plungers. You can find a way to do these with other things. Um, you can have a you know a guy standing here holding an agile bag. Doesn't really matter, okay? But the whole purpose of this drill is that quick shoulder reduction, quick shoulder flash. So this is not necessarily as good as I would like it, and we'll kind of talk through that here in a second. Uh, the the purpose of this drill is to kind of keep your core of your body straight, right? Like straight up the field, okay? And the only thing that should be kind of reducing is that shoulder, okay? Boom. That, that's probably better right there, right? That's what you want. Now, this could be first level. This could, you know, just imagine he's right here and it's press and that's the defender. Yeah, this is what he's doing as he's getting by the defender. Or it could be a second level. It could be a linebacker sitting right here, you know, coming trying to wall you and you have to reduce and get past him. So, you know, the term that we use is sometimes just create a new line of scrimmage, right? So, you know, if I'm doing this on a second level, okay, I may have to create a new line of scrimmage. And that means I do the same exact things that I would do in a press scenario where I'm at now down the field, okay? Um, but that's that, th those are good reps, okay? That's exactly kind of what you want there, getting used to that. You know, you hear some people say grab grass, like that's fine. It doesn't really matter, but this is not what you want. And you can see, you know, this guy going here, all he's doing is just swinging his arms, right? There's no real shoulder reduction, okay? Like, he needs to turn his chest. His chest should be parallel. It's a little better. Parallel to the sideline, and it needs to be fast, okay? So, you know, and the thing that I try to show these guys sometimes, you know, when you get into these situations is how subtle those things may look, right? They're just very subtle, but it also allows you to get – past those defenders at times and don't let them get their hands on you. Okay. Very subtle things, but they work right there. Okay. Reducing that surface area, not allowing him to get both hands on you. And now he's in a trail position and we got him. Okay. Just another way you can kind of work this. You can, I've done this both with just my hand or you can use a crown. And really what you're trying to get is you want to put pressure right on that shoulder. Okay. And then when you say go, you should be you should you know, the coach should fall. Your arm should fall down. If you are, he's doing it correctly. Right. You want him to reduce that enough that your hand falls down. OK, so put a little bit of pressure on that guy. OK, and sometimes I kind of put a ball there. OK, I'll put a ball there just so they kind of can stay in that low posture. OK, as they release down the field, because as you know, right, the defender is not going to stop there. Right? He's going to continue to work you up the field. And sometimes you got to keep that posture down the field for a tag. OK, but again, just those things that are subtle, but they actually work right. They're subtle, but they work. 